Okay, this one is to show you uh, some of the basics about doing an eye exam and an ear exam. And we'll show some normals and abnormals. Okay, um, with the eye, you're going to use an ophthalmoscope and with the ear, an otoscope. These are devices that look deep inside the eye and the ear. So we already covered uh, the anatomy of the eye uh, and the ear on a prior slide. And the best thing for any medical professional, healthcare provider, whatever, at least in my opinion, the best thing to do is know your normals. Know what the back of the eye looks like, a normal eye. What the ear looks like when you look inside the ear, what's normal. What normal heart sounds sound like, lung sounds, what x-rays look like, um, reflexes, muscle testing. Um, all the things that we can do as far as exams are concerned know your normals because when you come across something abnormal you may not know what it is but it doesn't look normal because you're really really good at knowing your normals so uh, as a result here is a normal um, fundus so looking at the back of the eye and identify your parts so we have the Optic, optic disc and this is where cranial nerve 2 comes in and the blood vessels come in and look at the integrity of your blood vessels okay the they should be uh, you know look like normal tubes and the macula the color it's got that reddish color to it um, you know the veins are usually bigger than the arteries okay the the cup has a certain um, look to it you know a certain size okay a little bit about the instrument and we're not going to dive into uh, too deep of stuff here because these instruments can get pretty fancy with the different lenses and um, the lens selections and polarize and a uh, polarized filter your red free filter switch and so on okay so uh, bottom line is uh, this is your um, fairly common fundoscope and <clears throat> you can change the apertures okay again that's not something we're going to get into um, and then what you want to do is, at least for me, with my patients, when I look in their eye, I dim the light in the room because that dilates the pupil. And then I have them look at a certain spot on the wall on purpose so that their eyes are pointing in a certain direction, which sets me up uh, as an advantage to r really look back to the fundus of the eye. Okay. You, I, uh, you turn the, you turn the light on, look through it, get the red reflex. You know, kind of like the if you take a picture that the red eyes, so to speak. Well, there's you can elicit that response when you see it. When you see that red reflex, you carefully go in, go closer, not losing that red reflex until you see the back of the eye. Okay, so here we are, we're closer, and this is about the distance that you're going to be as you look inside their eye. Okay, now here's uh, a normal fundus. So the outline is clear, the physiological cup is pale and of a normal size. You've got that normal red-orange color, the macula area is dark. The vascular supply looks good. 
the uh, arteries and veins have the, the 2 to 3 ratio where arteries appear bright red, veins uh, that slight purplish color. Okay, now let's get into some uh, abnormals. Okay, so there's your normal. And let's check this out. All right, so this doesn't look right. Uh, this happens to be hypertensive retinopathy. So we're, we're getting pressure. Uh, there's a, a blood vessel that's not happy right here. Um, it's a hemorrhage. Okay, here's malignant hypertensive retinopathy. You can see the damage to the blood vessels. The color looks off. The disc doesn't look right. Macula and all that is just obliterated. It's not really there. can't really see it. And by the way, all these things we're going over, you do not have to identify these things on a test. This is just FYI stuff. Okay, we're just going over it to show you um, the purpose of looking in the back of the eye and then different things you can find. Okay, blood vessels, disc, I mean everything is obliterated. There's, look, there's really nothing there. Okay, um, there's an embolus. So we have uh, some damage there. And diabetic retinopathy, so people that have diabetes um, they can go blind and here's another diabetic retinopathy eye. Optic disc is gone. Blood vessels are all dilated like crazy. Okay, end stage diabetic retinopathy. Pretty aggressive. advanced hemorrhage and macular degeneration okay so if you're to ever look in the back of someone's eye uh, and you see this stuff you may not know what it is but you you can certainly say that's not normal okay all right so here's some other really scary things on the back of the eye Okay, there's a retinal detachment. I've caught several of those retinal detachments. Of course, I send them out. It's not something I treat. Pretty crazy stuff, isn't it? Okay, neuritis, atrophy, glaucoma cupping of the disc, distended blood vessels. Okay, here's the ear. Um, so same thing, know your normals. And we use the same device. So what you do is you take this, the fundoscope part, you screw it off, and then you screw this part on. So when you buy this set, the Wesh Allen, uh, these run four, five, six hundred bucks, depending on which one you get. And that's low end. They go up from there. They get really fancy. Um, now you can get cheaper models. There's some cheaper models out there, like a hundred bucks or whatever. But the good ones start around four or five hundred. And uh, you're going to have the otoscope and then the speculum that you can buy um, on my wall at my office. I've got a, a plastic holder. It's got four different. Um, compartments that I keep my speculums in. <sighs> okay, mine are disposable, so I have uh, these. The 2.5 millimeters for kids and the 4 millimeters for teens and adults. And it's a little bit of a judgment call. I mean, you know, you can have an 8 year old that looks 15, so you know you're going to use a bigger uh, speculum. Okay, uh, you'll want to, once you put the fundoscope and speculum on, you just simply, now I'll disregard the bulb there, we're not going to do the bulb version, 
and because that helps with changes in air, the air pressure in the canal. Um, we're just going to do a straight up fundoscope exam, okay? Uh, as far as technique, you want to uh, grab the patient's ear, and with adults, you typically pull up and back. With kids, sometimes it's straight back or back and down. And everybody's built a little bit different, so there is some manipulating you may have to do to, to align the ear canal so that you can see the eardrum, the tympanic membrane. Okay, So you grab the ear first, and then gently place the speculum in, and then look in and start realigning. Do be careful not to hit um, you know, tissue or go too deep because it'll hurt. Uh, of course, there's going to be some pressure, but you can also be gentle with them and still be effective. All right, so when you look at the back of the ear, you should see uh, a nice pearly white look, um, this off-white color, and uh, you will see the ear ossicles, okay? Um, the malleus and the incus and the stapes, and then once you know your normals, then you can start identifying your abnormals. Okay, now you can get a red reflex. So sometimes, you know, for whatever reason, there's just some dilation. They're warm, they're flush. Maybe the light itself is warm. And, um, or a prolonged exam of the ear, or they've been messing with it. It's just a little bit red. Everything's fine. It's just got some dilated blood vessels. So that would be considered the red reflex. Okay, now we're going to get into some uh, legit disorders of the ear. Uh, we've got some outcroppings here coming out of the ear. And foreign object, you know, I've seen foreign objects in people's ears. Um, acute otitis externa. Okay, so called aggressive. This is an aggressive form of swimmer's ear. Okay, keratosis, just abnormal growth of uh, you know, the keratination process. That's pretty aggressive. Here's a common one, acute otitis media. This is what an infection can look like. Um, there's different things that can cause the infection. Most of the time, it's, uh, let, me, let me rephrase that. You're, right here, we're having a bulge of the tympanic membrane. You can see it bulging towards you, okay? So that's pressure, the pressure trying to get out, and the eardrum is bulging. Now, of course, I like to go in there and correct the pressure by opening up the tubes and you know, the stuff we've talked about on prior slides. But I also understand at some point, um, if, if this has been left untreated, it can turn into an, inf an infection. And then uh, one of the things you're worried about with infection is mastoiditis, hearing loss, you know, things like that. Okay, here's a serous otitis media where you're seeing um, a bubble form. This is a classic eustachian tube obstruction and unequalization of pressure. That can lead to this. That's what an ear, uh, ear tube looks like. A tympanostomy. There's a ruptured eardrum. 
that's a healed eardrum. I've seen a lot of that as I've looked in ears. You can see the scar tissue from uh, an eardrum that was torn and there's the healing scar tissue. Okay, this definitely is an infection. You know, if I saw something like this, I'm sending them out. I mean, that's, that's really aggressive. You have discharge, bacterial infections, and so forth. Plaque buildup, hyalinization of collagen, that white spot you're seeing there. Usually means there was a prior ear infection, and that's the scar that's from it. Plaque buildup. Uh, eustachian tube obstruction and the unequalization of pressure. You can create some adhesions, especially if there was a central perforation, a, a tear, just like this. Here's a traumatic, here's a tear, fresh tear. You can see um, the bleeding and uh, basically the hole in the tympanic membrane. They do heal, and they'll turn into what we saw earlier with the scar tissue. They typically heal, but you have to be careful, though. You know, you want to protect them. You, these are times you don't want to swim. You don't want to put Q-tips in there or anything. Abnormal keratinization. Okay, so you get the idea of um, the importance of being able to know your normals, to look in the ear, and look in an eye.